Hello everyone. Uh, this video will be on uh, stomach pathology. So, at first, what is stomach? Stomach is a part of gastrointestinal system, which consists of four parts: cardiac, fundus, body, and antrum. So, cardiac is it, uh, it's in the junction of gastroesophageal junction. There is no actual sp anatomical sphincter is not there. Uh, there is mucin secreting cells in the cardiac region and the next region region is fundus region it has parietal cells and chief cells body has parietal cells and chief cells antrum it is two uh, it is divided into two pyloric antrum and pylorus it is a distal end of the stomach and it has mucin secreting cells and g cells All those cells and I mentioned the function of those cells are parietal cells also called as oxidating cells is the cell which secretes acid that is the CL and intrinsic factor which is necessary for vitamin B12 absorption. Chief cells also called as zymogenic cells responsible for the secretion of pepsinogen 1 and 2 it's a proenzyme which is converted into pepsin which is a proteolytic enzyme. And third is foveolar cells, which cells which secretes mucin. And G cells, it is a entrochromaffin like cells. It secretes gastrin. Gastrin in turn stimulates parietal cells to release acid. And also stomach histologically has four layers from above downward. Mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa. Okay, so then uh, the secretion of the acid is divided into three phases: cephalic phase, when you see, when you when you smell, when you taste the food. At that time only the acid will be released. This is acid pepsinogen mucus will be released. This is cephalic phase. Once the food enters into stomach it is called as gastric phase and intestinal phase is actually a negative phase like i have got food stop secreting acid so there are three phases cephalic gastric and intestinal whenever the patient complains of either epigastric pain bleeding in the form of hematemesis or melina nausea vomiting and you may and uh, iron deficiency anemia symptoms like and fatigue, easy breathlessness, easy fatigability, and you can see that pallor is present in the patient. In all these cases, you may suspect that there might be stomach pathology. Okay, clinical features may be epigastric pain, bleeding in the form of hematemesis or melina, nausea, vomiting. And in some cases, there may be iron deficiency anemia, hemorrhage, perforation, and weight loss. Okay. So, at first, what are the abnormalities in the congenital abnormalities in the stomach? It is only one abnormality is mainly is seen, that is pyloric stenosis. It is hypertrophy and narrowing of hyperplasia and hypertrophy of circular layer of muscularis in the, in the pylorus part. It is infantile in nature, so it will be seen in a it has male predominance, and the child may be three to six week old. He may present with vomiting, visible peristalsis from left to right. Also, check out where do you see the peristalsis from right to left. Here it is from left to right, and palpable mass. <coughs> he may have constipation and weight loss. These are the main features of congenital anomalies and it is mainly pyloric stenosis. Next, inflammatory conditions in the gas stomach are gastritis. Gastritis is commonly when there is upper abdominal discomfort like indigestion, dyspepsia in which specific clinical signs and radiological abnormalities are absent. You know that gastritis means inflammation. Itis is inflammation. Clinically, they may be asymptomatic or they may present with epigastric pain. 
they may respond to epigastric pain which may respond to antacids and protonform inhibitors they may have nausea vomiting actually gastritis is mucosal inflammation you know if 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 the inflammation is mainly caused by neutrophils it is called as acute if there is no inflammation it is called as gastropathies sometimes gastropathies may lead a progress to gastritis what are the agents causing this inflammation of the mucosa nsaids tobacco alcohol mainly its pylori stress related like you have physical stress psychological stress and due to gastric hyperacidity duodenal reflux gastric reflux due to bile you may have inflammation normally why don't why won't we have the like, inflammation though acid is there why there is no inflammation normally it's because of normal protective factors in our body the surface mucus secretion bicarbonate secretion into mucus mucosal blood flow mucosal blood flow is also related to alkaline tide you know what is alkaline tide like it's when hcl is re- released into lumen bicarbonate ion is re- released into blood flow so this will wash out the uh, whatever acidic content in the epithelium and in and uh, acts as acts as protective factor and there is epithelial barrier function epithelial regenerative capacity and elaboration of prostaglandins see prostaglandins are important in protection so whenever you take nsaids which inhibits prostaglandin synthesis there is injury okay these protective factors protects us against this acidic content and peptic enzymes whenever there is injury or whenever there is ischemia shock injuries by h pylori infection tobacco alcohol smoking bile there is increased damage so this may lead to ulcer ulcer have these three parts necrosis debris four parts necrosis debris non specific acute inflammation and granulation tissue fibrosis okay normal protective fun- fun- factors and when there is disruption in this protective factors it leads to ulcer there are two types of gastritis acute and chronic acute histologically lamina propria is only moderately edema is seen and vas- slight vascular congestion is seen but foveolar cells hyperplasia it's up is seen it appears like cock screw screw profile okay there is epithelial proliferation as a feedback mechanism to protect its protect itself against these path in fact ap- against these damaging factors there are presence of neutrophils indicating acute inflammation there may be erosion hemorrhages in severe cases and then we move on to chronic gastritis chronic gastritis it's commonly due to h pylori and autoimmune also it may be due to ga- radiation injury chronic bile refl- reflux mechanical injuries and may be due to amyloidosis graft host reaction mainly the patient complains of nausea and upper, upper um, abdominal pain what is the clinical difference between acute and chronic is in acute the symptoms are severe but in chronic there are less severe and more persistent chronic symptoms are less severe and more persistent coming to h pylori gastritis bacteria it's a bacteria which causes h pylori is a bacteria you know that it's spiral or comma in shaped some there are some risk factors which increases the these bacterial infection they are overcrowding poverty so lower social economic status limited education Okay. mainly it is due to overcrowding and lower social economic status what is the pathogenesis of this how does this bacteria causes gastritis it mainly causes antral gastritis okay there are both human uh, host factors and uh, bacterial factors which causes this chronic gastritis bacterial factors like its structure it has flagella it can invade which allows the bacteria to be motile in viscous mucosa and 
as adhesins that enhances the bacterial adherence to the surface foveolar cells and it produces enzymes namely urease protease phospholipase others okay so mainly what you have to see here is urease urease generates ammonia from the endogenous urea so this ammonia will decreases the acidic content surrounding it so it it enhances the bacterial survival and it has two toxins namely cytotoxin associated gene and vacuolating cytotoxin vac and ca caga okay and another you might uh, you must remember is it it has ability to reduce nitrates to nitrites so nitrites is oncogenic which will be knowing the importance in cancer h pylori this is the bacterial factors okay also there are host factors which are responsible for acute chronic gastritis there are duration of the exposure location of the bacteria and inflammatory response like if they if there is increased expression of pro inflammatory cytokines like tnf tumor necrosis factor interleukin 1 beta they are prone to infection and if there is decreased expression of anti inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 10 they are develop they are associated with development of pancreatitis atrophy or gastric cancer also okay morphologically okay morphologically morphology of this gastritis is this is a special stain called as warthin stain stain used for the detection of h pylori in the stomach you may see that there is some rods in the above the mucosa they are uh, h pylori actually and one characterizing features of this h pylori gastritis is there are presence of intra epithelial t cells and sub epithelial plasma cells okay intra epithelial t cells and sub epithelial plasma cells are seen their lateral mucosa is usually erythematous and covers a nodular appearance grossly and histologically there is intra epithelial neutrophils and sub epithelial plasma cells is a t cells then it is neutrophils intra epithelial neutrophils and sub epithelial plasma cells how do you detect h pylori in the stomach gold standard is histology histologically you have to Use special stains, silver and non-silver stains. Jimsa stain, or is a type of non-silver stain, and this Warthin stain is a type of silver stain. If you detect those, when uh, it's a diagnosis of H. pylori related gastritis, uh, you may use a culture of the biopsy taken for the growth of H. pylori, and uh, one other, one rapid test is urease breath test. because urea enzyme is present in the stomach of the patient it converts whatever carbon you have taken into ammonia and that is detected actually okay and another another type of gastritis is autoimmune related gastritis it is mainly due to auto antibodies against parietal cells or intrinsic factors there uh, and pathogenesis is a uh, there is loss there is an auto antibodies against parietal cells so there is loss of parietal cells which responsible for uh, gastric acid and uh, intrinsic factors so since there is decreased gastric acid there is stimulation of gastrin due to this there is hypergastrinemia and hyperplasia of antral gastrin producing cells characteristic is there is hypergastrinemia and hyperplasia of gastrin G- of g cells okay and since there is also auto antibodies against intrinsic factor the patient may end up with the symptoms of uh, vitamin b12 deficiency there might they might have developed megaloblastic anemia and the severity may go to such an extent that there is neurological symptoms like paresthesia and numbness if once this stage is reached you can you cannot revert back to the normal okay 
once this neural peripheral neuropathy stage is reached in these patients it's very difficult to bring them bring them back to normal histologically there is deep lymphocyte uh, li deep lymphocytes are seen rather superficial and you may detect auto antibodies in their blood serologically so this is the characteristics of auto antibody coming to the difference of those com comparing together h pali related is mainly antrum predominant autoimmune is body predominant there is intra epithelial neutrophils and sub epithelial plasma muscles in h pali related gastritis and lymphocytes mainly is, are mainly seen in uh, autoimmune diseases autoimmune gastritis and there is normal acid and gastrin in h pylori but in autoimmune disorders acid is decreased gastrin is increased now this and h pylori acute may lead to chronic it may be asymptomatic or may uh, become a ulcer or may become a lymphoma or may lead to gastric cancer gastric ulcer or in severe cases if there is persistent of its pylori infection it may lead to dysplasia for the gastric cancer okay there are some other types of gastritis some rare forms eosinophilic gastritis where eosinophil are predominant lymphocytic gastritis where lymphocytes are predominant granulomatous gastritis granulomatous gastritis due to diseases causing granuloma like Crohn's disease, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis and fungal infection or cytomegalovirus infection. This video we covered like up to, we did introduction, congenital abnormalities, gastropathies, acute gastritis, stress-related gastritis, namely Cushing and curling ulcers which we will be learning in the next video and uh, chronic gastritis at their forms. Then next video we will be knowing all these types. So this is all this video. Covered everything up to there. So thank you.